Hey everybody, in this video, we are going to create a smart contract that enforces access control, that uses permissions. We're going to create roles and we're going to allocate those roles to wallets and that will mean that only those wallets with the correct roles will be able to invoke certain functions. To do this, we're going to use the third web CLI to create a brand new smart contract. And then we're going to use the third web permissions extension to add this access control, this permissions functionality to our smart contract. The third web permissions extension is one of a suite of tools that third web offers through its contract kit. Currently, 71.4% of people who watch our web three videos have not subscribed to the channel. So if you've taken away any value from what we're doing, can I ask just one small favor? Hit that subscribe button and join the 29%. Each week we are going to be airdropping a very special and rare third web NFT to 10 subscribers. Let's dive into the code and see how we can add permissions and access control to our smart contract. So I'm here in VS Code and I've zoomed in a little bit on my terminal so that you can see clearly what I'm doing. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a new smart contract using the third web CLI. So npx third web latest, uh, third web at latest, create. And then we're going to use the contract flag to tell it that we want to create a smart contract. We have to give it a name. So let's call it permissions. Let's use hard at, and we've got a choice of these different contracts, which is the base contracts that we could start with. So ERC 721, ERC 20s, or ERC 1155s. We're going to use a, an empty contract so that we can do with it what we please. And then we're going to let it install everything. The third web CLI is a very handy tool for getting started from scratch. So if you don't have an existing project and you're starting out with nothing, the third web CLI is the easiest place to start off building a Web3 app. So we're using the contract flag um, at the end over here, which tells it that we want to use a contract. But if you remove that or you replace it with dash dash app, instead of contract, then you will have the option of creating a Next.js app, a create React app, or using other frameworks to create your Web3 app. What's really nice is that all of the necessary dependencies come installed. You've got the basic scaffolding, the, the outline of the project already there, and you don't have to worry about all of that setup. You just have to start building. So now that this is um, ready to get going, let's open it up um, a little bit. And um, this is going to be the permissions file folder and now you can see that what comes built here is the contract and it comes just with an empty contract because that's what we selected and of course installed over here is um well hard hat that's what we chose and also um the third web contract package which is what we're going to need to get building and um, if you were to be creating an app using the third web cli you would see that the third web sdks would be installed here um, instead of the contracts package so now that we've seen just exactly what we've got once we've created the app we can dive into actually building so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to import the third web permissions contract that we're going to have to use in our smart contract so we're going to go import and at third web dash dev forward slash contract forward slash extension forward slash and um, permissions permissions dot soul and then now that we've um, imported, we can make our smart contract inherit from that. So we're going to say is permissions, and then we um, can start actually um, building with these permissions. So if you were starting out from scratch, then you would do exactly what I've done so far, use the third web CLI to create a contract and import it, et cetera, et cetera. If you are integrating this into an existing contract that you've already started working on, then all you have to do is just install um, this dependency, right? The third web contracts dependency, and then you're ready to get started. So now that we've got that, we're going to, the first thing we're going to do is set up a role. So what's really important to note is that the third web permissions structure works off of roles. So everything um, is based off of these roles that you can create and each role is a Bytes32 value. So it can be any Bytes32 value and then you can assign that role to a to or you can grant that role to a particular wallet. So when we are deploying this contract, we want to set up a role um, and we're going to um, invoke the setup role function, which is um, inherited from the permissions contract. And you can see that we have to pass into here two things. The first is the name of the role. So what we're going to pass into here is default admin role. 
and this is the name of a role that we inherit again from the permissions contract from third web this is the default admin role and um, that comes built in to the permissions contract and um, you should set it up to be equal or, or to be granted to the message.sender of in the constructor the wallet that deploys the smart contract will be granted the default admin role and this will give it the ability to grant other roles to create other roles um, and generally just to manage all of the um, permissions for for this smart contract and now that we've set up that basic piece of it we can start to um, see how we can enforce the requirement for a certain role in order to invoke a function and so what I mean is we can create access control for a function so let's um, start to make a new function let's call this function add we're going to pass into here um, two arguments so a uint 256 and called a and another un256 called b we're going to make this a public function and a view and we're going to use the only role modifier which is also inherited from the third web permissions contract so we're going to say only role and this as it sounds makes it that only a wallet with this role granted to it can invoke this function so um, it requires that the wallet that or the address which is invoking this function has got this role um, granted to it. And from this function, we are going to um, we're going to return a uint two fifty six, and then in here we're going to return a plus b. So this is our function, and as you can see, as I mentioned, we're using the only role modifier which comes from the permissions contract that we are inheriting from, and this means that only a an address that has got this role granted to it will be able to invoke this function. So that is the most basic implementation of, um, of these permissions. We set up the role granting the deployer of the contract the default admin role and then we can enforce um, this access control using the only role. Let's make it a little bit more interesting and let's add some more functionality to our contract and let's also add another role that we can work with. So to add another role we're going to set up a new variable and we're going to be, it's going to be of bytes32 type. It is a public variable and we can make it a constant. We're going to call this the subtract role. We're going to set it to the kachak256 hash of the string subtract role. So this will give us a bytes32 value, which is how all of the third web permissions work. And then this name, this subtract role, is, is the same as like this default admin role. Um, and it is how we will refer to this role um, throughout the rest of the contract. To add a little bit more functionality to the contract, we're going to um, create a new variable called, um, and it's gonna be a type uint256. It's going to be public and it is called number. And then our add function, we're going to edit it slightly. So instead of taking two arguments, um, it's only gonna take one. And instead of returning A plus B, we're going to simply say that we want to add the argument, whatever is being passed into this function, to the number. So number plus equals A, and then, oh, we also have to make sure it's not a view function anymore because now we are changing the state. Um, and now we've got a little bit more functionality added to our smart contract. And the next step that we're going to do is add a new function to our smart contract. So let's um, go here and we're gonna create a new function. This is gonna be called the subtract function. And we're gonna pass into here also a uint256 and we're going to um, call that one A as well. It is also going to be a public. And we're going to enforce a role using the only role modifier. And this time we're going to pass in the subtract role. And we're going to say that it also returns a UN256. Um, and as you can see, this will actually um, subtract the argument that we've passed into here from the number. As you can see, I'm actually being flagged and corrected here that this doesn't actually return anything. So we can remove these two returns because these functions are now not returning anything because of the way that we've changed the functionality. So those statements there are no longer necessary. But essentially what you can see here is that we've created a smart contract. We have firstly set up the default admin role and granted it to the deployer of the smart contract. Then we created a function called add and we enforce that only the default admin role can invoke this function. Then we created a new role, the subtract role, and we have enforced that the subtract function can only be called by the by wallets or addresses which hold or which are granted the subtract role. 
Um, and these functions obviously affect our, our number variable, um, which is just which defaults to zero as a starting point, and then we'll go up or down as we um, play with it. Now, this smart contract, there's obviously a very, very basic functionality. If we really wanted to make this into a real smart contract, we'd add a couple of require statements here just to make sure that everything will actually work as we need it to. But for now, we don't have to worry about all of that. What we're going to focus on next is we've seen how to create a role, how to enforce access control, but how do we grant a role? So the easiest way to grant a role is by deploying your smart contract using third web deploy, and then you will be able to invoke the grant role function from the third web dashboard. So to do that, we're going to open up our terminal again, and inside the terminal, we're going to go npx third web at latest deploy, and we're going to hit enter, and we're going to let the third web CLI work its magic. It is going to detect the contract, compile it, process the contract, upload the contract data, and then it will di uh, direct us to the third web dashboard in our browser. So it will also give us a link down here, which we could click on, um, which you'll see in a second, as soon as it's done uploading the contract data, and we'll get the link, and then we can go straight through into our browser. And um, you can see this is the link down here. Um, and it also automatically opened up a new window in my browser. So I'm just going to, um, well, let's first in the window that was opened up. And if for whatever reason it didn't open up a window in your browser or you aren't sure where that window is, you can also just click on this link um, down here. It will also open up straight into the third web dashboard where you can deploy your contract. Um, and as you can see here, I'm in the third web dashboard. The contract name is my contract, which comes from um, my contract over here and um, you can see that it has detected these extensions has detected the permissions extension and it asks me which chain I want to deploy the contract on so I'm going to deploy it on the Mumbai testnet I'm going to connect my wallet which is a MetaMask wallet and um, once I have connected my wallet I should be able to yeah, I should be able to now deploy this contract um, and going to click on deploy now oh, I have to switch my wallet to Mumbai so let's do that and now let's and wait for it to load a second. And now let's try that again. So confirm. Um, and you'll notice that there will be two transactions, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And there should be two transactions, I think, and um, that we have to approve. Um, but in any case, what's really special about this is that we get to deploy our smart contract to the blockchain without running the risk of exposing our private keys. There's no complicated config files. There's no, um, oh, this is the second transaction. So there's no complicated config files, there's no ENV variables, there's no um, worrying about secret managers or anything else that you need normally to keep your um, private key and to keep your wallet safe. I can simply just deploy it with a few clicks in my dashboard here, um, and that is super convenient and really, really secure. The next incredible thing is that if I deploy my smart contract using third web, I get this dashboard to interact with my smart contract and to monitor it. This explorer lets me see all the functions that are available um, in this smart contract, and I can actually invoke these functions. I can read any of these things, um, or I can write using any of these um, or any of these functions. I can view any events that are emitted from this um, from the smart contract. So you can see the role granted event was emitted when the contract was created. It allocated the default admin role to the wallet address that deployed the smart contract. Um, and you can also then be able to view the um, the code tab, the permissions tab, settings tab, sources, et cetera, et cetera. The code tab is really awesome because it gives you these little code snippets that you can then use to build with your smart contract. And so that's really, really worth exploring. Um, but for now, let's go back to our Explorer. Um, and as you can see here, we've got a whole bunch of functions that we can invoke. We're going to use the grant role function to grant the subtract role to a new wallet or, or to a, a, a wallet basically. And in order to do that, we have to get the a bytes 32 value because you can see that you have to pass into the role and the account and we have to um, make this of type bytes 32 and this has to be an address. So to get something of bytes uh, of type bytes 32, we can use a tool um, like this one. Let's just... Uh, one second, copy this across into here so that we can um, see it. Um, and um, you can see over here, I'm just going to um, put into here the um, the what we want to um, convert into the bytes 32, and this is going to be subtract roll. And then I'm going to copy this across. I'm going to do 0x and then paste that in. And then the account that I'm going to use is going to be this wallet address. 
Um, and again, what we're doing here is we are granting this role, this bytes32 value, um, which is the kachak256 hash of the subtract role string. We're granting that to this account. We're gonna click on execute, and this will bring up a pop-up another transaction and we can click confirm. And we are actually interacting with our smart contract that is deployed on the Mumbai testnet, which is really, really amazing. Um, and so now we can see that um, we are granting this role. Once the role is granted, we will see the output down here and we will be able to view an event in the events tab. So let's just wait for that a second. Great, so now we can see the output down here. If we go over to the events tab, you can see there's a second role granted event. Let's open up these a little bit. And you can see that this is the role that we granted now. And um, this is the, um, the subtract role. We granted it to this account um, or to this address. Um, and, uh, and, and then that is how we can add a role. What we've done in this video is that we have um, created a new smart contract using the third web CLI. We have imported the third web permissions extension, inherited from it, and we have used the third web permissions extension to set up the default admin role allocated to the deployer of the contract. We've enforced access control, we've created a new role, and after we've deployed it using the third web CLI, we have granted a new role to our wallet address. If you have enjoyed this video, if you've learned something, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, drop us a comment down below in the YouTube comments. If you've got any questions or anything that wasn't clear in the video, please hop into the Third Web Discord. The entire Third Web team is there waiting for you and we are happy to discuss anything and help you with whatever you're building. So we can't wait to see you there. Thank you so much for watching the video and we can't wait for the next one.